Up here on Mountain News at 530, following the death of a Morgan County deputy over the weekend, a community comes together to remember the man behind the badge and what leaders are doing to ensure safety as students return to in-person classes at the University of Kentucky. And we're staying sunny and cold around the mountains. I'll have the very latest on how long that looks to continue coming up right now at 530. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 530. Good evening to you. I'm Dakota Makris. We begin tonight in Morgan County, where the local sheriff's department is mourning the death of a deputy killed in a weekend crash. Alex Spencer died in what his fellow officers call a tragic accident. Coworkers say Spencer always wanted to be a member of law enforcement. And although they had officer offers elsewhere, he chose to stay home and serve his Morgan County community and did so both on and off duty. I worked cases with Alex and he was a fine deputy and he'll be missed in his community. Everybody knows Alex. He was involved with teaching karate to young children. He taught his own kids, uh, was worked around the gym and wellness center, you know, working out and helping folks. Uh, Motley says their focus now is supporting Spencer's family. He leaves behind a wife and two young boys. Another semester, but COVID is still a big concern as cases spike and Omicron surges. But at this point, University of Kentucky officials think they're in a pretty good position. So far, UK is posting a 90% vaccination rate for its campus community and still maintains policies on weekly testing for unvaccinated people and masking. And that's allowing them to keep classes in person and on time. Uh, we know that anxiety rates have gone up, mental health issues uh, have increased as a result of the sort of disconnection and isolation. And that's been particularly acute with younger people. So it's important in, in the K-12 context and in this university context, it's important for young people to be connected, to be in community, and that means being back in that classroom. Now in the coming weeks, university officials plan to release details about a COVID booster incentive program for students Officials are also encouraging those on campus to get their flu shot. Well, some breaking news right now for BBN. One star of this year's team is returning in 2022. Our Courtney Lane Brewer joins us now with more. Courtney. Thanks, Dakota. As players left and right announce their future plans, one of the Wildcats' best will return to Lexington. Chris Rodriguez Jr. announced on Twitter that he will return to Big Blue Nation for another season. The junior rushed for 1,379 yards this season, the fifth highest single season in school history. He boasts 26 career rushing touchdowns, tied for the second most in school history, and led the Cats to two touchdowns against the Hawkeyes. I'll have more on C-Rod and more news from the Wildcats coming up in sports. <laughs> Thank you, Courtney. A big returning player for the Cats there. For us, plenty of blue in our forecast in terms of both the sky and our temperature map because it's chilly outside. London Corbin Airport right now, we're seeing some of that sunset actually working through out there as we get past the half past five uh, time frame now. Sitting at 35 in London Corbin Airport. Out front of our studios here at WYMT, even though the sun sets in the opposite direction, Still looks pretty nice as we overlook Black Gold Boulevard this evening. Mid-30s out there for just about everybody. Wise in the low 30s. Few upper 30s. Jacksboro's at 39. They spend most of the afternoon in the low 40s, as a matter of fact. But we're all going to start seeing those temperatures cool down. As we head through the nighttime hours, we factor in that wind out there, and it feels closer to the low 30s and upper 20s. That's because we're seeing winds out there out of the northwest. Cool direction between 5, 10, even 15 miles per hour. As we've gone through the day, the good news is those winds will start to calm down overnight and we'll continue with that clean sweep on pinpoint Doppler. Those clouds pushing east of the Big Sandy, so they're going to start to cool off as well as we head into the overnight. Keep that WYMT weather app handy, though. It's going to be chilly as we head into tonight. Temperatures down into the 20s by the time we head to bed, and a lot of us wake up in the morning in the upper teens. We do have milder weather on the way, though, and I'll have the details on that coming up in just a few short minutes. Dakota? All right, Evan, thank you. Well, tax season is nearly upon us. The IRS says it will start accepting 2021 federal tax returns on Monday, January 24th. Filers have until April 18th to complete their return. The deadline is further extended for tornado and storm victims in Arkansas, Illinois, Kentucky, and Tennessee, as well as wildfire victims in Colorado. 
Treasury officials are already warning of process delays. Now, the IRS has millions of backlog returns because of the pandemic and limited funding. But if you are owed a refund, the typical turnaround is still 21 days if you opt for direct deposit. Today, lawmakers for former President Donald Trump asked a federal judge to throw out a series of lawsuits from Democratic lawmakers and Capitol Police officers, all asking that the former president be held liable for the January 6th insurrection. The judge is not expected to issue a ruling right away. Skylar Henry has more from the Capitol. A federal judge in Washington, D.C. heard arguments on whether three civil lawsuits accusing former President Donald Trump of inciting the January 6th Capitol assault can proceed. Two cases were brought by California Congressman Eric Swalwell and a group of House Democrats led by January 6th Committee Chair Betty Thompson. Two members of the U.S. Capitol Police Force filed a third suit seeking damages for physical and emotional injuries they say they suffered from the riot. It often is difficult to draw lines between what is said and what happens, particularly when the person who's making the statements isn't the person actually taking the actions to physically harm somebody. Lawyers for the former president want the lawsuits dismissed, claiming he has absolute immunity. In part, what the former president is arguing is that he can't be sued because he was president at the time and what the statements that he was making were official acts, that they were part of his official duties. Meanwhile, here on Capitol Hill, another key Trump ally, Congressman Jim Jordan, is refusing to cooperate with the House Select January 6th committee that's investigating the attack on the U.S. Capitol. The committee asked for a voluntary meeting last month, calling the Ohio Republican a material witness, given his direct contacts with former President Trump on January 6th. In a letter, Mr. Jordan wrote he has no confidence that the select committee will fairly or accurately represent any information he could provide. A committee spokesperson accused the congressman of trying to hide the facts and says the panel will consider appropriate next steps in the coming days. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Former President Donald Trump says he will address the House Committee's January 6th insurrection during an Arizona rally planned for this coming Saturday. A former American Idol star is making a second bid to enter politics. Monday, Clay Aiken announced on Twitter he is once, once again running for Congress in the state of North Carolina. Aiken is campaigning to unseat Congresswoman Kathy Manning, a Democrat who currently represents the state's 6th con congressional district. It can gain national attention after he won the hit TV singing competition American Idol back in 2003. Kids misbehave more when they are in school. At least that's what parents think. Harvard University surveyed 350 parents about how their kids acted when they were learning from home in hybrid situations and in school full time. Those parents reported more instances of aggression, withdrawal and difficulty paying attention when kids were learning remotely. Those numbers went down when kids switched to hybrid environments and down more when they went to school full time. Now, the results were published in JAMA Pediatrics Medical Journal. Now, the average age of kids studied was seven and a half years old. COVID-19 cases have surged almost threefold in the military since just before Christmas. The Defense Department reported just under 5,300 cases among service members December 22nd. By January 5th, that number reached more than 13,900. Officials say those numbers reflect what is happening in much of the country as the Omicron variant takes hold. In response, the military is increasing health restrictions on many bases and at the Pentagon. The National Park Service is investigating vandalism at Big Bend National Park in Texas. The agency says someone scratched their names and a date into a panel of prehistoric stone artwork. The names Norma, Adrian, Isaac, and Ariel, and the date 12-26-21, are visible. Now they are thought to be between four, and now that stone is thought to be between four and five, four thousand and eighty-five hundred years old. The National Park Service believes the incident happened December 26th. The rock has since been treated, but the scratches and discoloration are permanent. Prices are climbing, and it might be time for your paycheck to match, according to the Federal Reserve. We saw more than 6.8% 6, 6 inflation in November of 2021, the highest since June of, nine, of June of 1982. Investigate TV's Rachel De Palma explains why asking for a raise now can make sense in this watching your wallet. Workers have a little more power this year. You are valuable and employers know it. 
Companies across the country are pulling out all the stops to hire, offering signing bonuses and increased pay. Michael Joyce with the financial firm Agili says, now is actually a good time to ask for a raise that keeps up with inflation. It's certainly reasonable to ask for uh, a raise that will compensate you for the amount that inflation has gone up. And you might have a lot of leverage because uh, there are a lot of other employers that are looking to hire. He encourages you to also look at your total compensation with an employer. Look at the 401k match. What are the benefits? Is the employer paying any of your health insurance premiums? While he doesn't encourage folks to make threats of leaving without a job lined up, he does say if you don't ask the question about a raise, the answer is always no. With this Investigate TV watching your wallet, I'm Rachel DePompo.